series my name is DM Critical Fail and today I am going to be doing this video as a it's going to be a basic sort of video for newcomers brand new into the hobby and basically the first steps of, of getting into the hobby is in general um, I understand quite a lot of people who may view this video are going to be more experienced players more experienced dungeon masters or game masters um, so some of this information might not be quite relevant however because you are more experienced I would still be interested in your views and comments so p please feel free any comments chuck them down below and I would love to read them um, but getting back to it this first video is really going to be about trying to get new people into the hobby and if you are a new person a couple of ways that might be open to you getting into the hobby and what to expect okay so I'm gonna jump in with the first way of getting in and it might be that um, a friend or family member has invited you into one of their groups okay so what to expect and what do you do well normally this would involve people sort of ga gathering at someone's house uh, around the dining room table or something like that and just playing for a few hours having a few laughs and possibly gathering say once a week once a fortnight possibly once a month um, so if you are invited you know you accept what do you do well first of all if you know the person who is um, hosting you know they're going to their house for example um, and you and you do know them they are your friend or family member or something um, obviously make sure you t turn up on time um, there's nothing worse than people being late um, obviously some things do happen but constantly being late is always a really sort of negative thing to do um, but if you do know who they are see if you can get there a little bit early um, see if they need any help setting anything up by getting um, you know the places sorted out um, if they're doing snacks and you know beers and stuff like that so, you know sorting helping sort those out and using a bit of that time to have a look around and ask any sort of questions that you might have about the system or about um, you know how the game runs sort of thing obviously don't swamp them with questions because quite a lot of your questions will be answered while you're playing the game and watching other people playing the game so don't try not to think of too many questions but sort of your, your big burning questions try and get them asked before the game sort of starts um, when everyone's there and they're all turning up be friendly you know it's a, a social game it's a, you know it's a social environment you know, just be friendly chat with people have a laugh and you know just just be yourself but be friendly you know um, there's nothing worse than having that one person who's just a little bit off with everybody when everybody else is trying to get along and trying to move things forward so you know just just keep it friendly um, the the next sort of rule depends on the group that you're playing with um, basically the rule that I would come up with would be you know try not to interrupt the play with a myriad of questions if you have questions wait till your turn and then ask a couple of questions and again don't ask too many questions because you're just going to bog everything down and players are going to start losing their immersion into the system um, the reason why this is different is because some groups might turn around because they know that you're brand new into the system into the game itself they may turn around and just say you know what if you have any questions just you know just ask the question and we'll be able to answer it for you and help you get into the game and the flow of it a little bit quicker um, but sometimes like I say it's the immersion that people are there for so if you're trying to do ask too many questions you're interrupting players you're interrupting the game master too much people's immersion is going to be lost people are going to start getting bored and they might even start getting fed up with all the questions that you're asking so it is a tricky one just be careful with the questions that you're asking and again if you interrupt a dungeon master or a games master or even the players they m the the bit that they're talking about may actually answer one or two of the questions that you actually have so again it's a good thing to do of trying to just allowing them to talk and then asking any questions that you do have preferably at the beginning of your turn and just seeing how it goes um, 
so for the roundup of the first one the the last sort of point I have for this is be respectful okay and again this goes back over a couple of the other sort of points such as don't interrupt players don't interrupt dungeon masters and things like that but it also goes up to you know don't don't mess around on your mobile phone all the time you know put it on silent put it in your pocket if something has come up in your you know your personal life so I don't know your your wife might be nine months pregnant and you're expecting a phone call to rush off to the hospital why you're playing you know Dungeons and Dragons I've no idea but you know each to their own um, or you know family members ill or something like that before you start before you sit down and start just say look listen I've got a bit of an emergency there's nothing happening yet but would anybody mind um, if I have the phone on so like vibrate or vibrate if I get a phone call or a text message and just leave it in my pocket or on the table and if I get the phone call I can just d dash straight off and if you explain it to them beforehand I don't think many people are going to have too much of a problem um, but then if it comes back round to this whole you're interrupting players, you're interrupting things, you're on your mobile phone um, quite a lot of groups will have sort of like a break at some point so you can use the toilet and the bathroom you can go and get some more snacks, you can go and get another beer and things like that if you just keep getting up and wandering off and wandering off and again breaking people's immersions they're going to get irritated with you and even if it's not your sort of a thing at the end of the night you might be walking home and thinking well there's a group of three four five nerds that you know not really interesting on the flip side of the coin there's three four or five people watching you walking down the street thinking there goes an asshole. It really depends on how you want to look at that one, but again, the basic rule is just be respectful for everybody. And if you do enjoy that, you know, and that's the way you've got you've gotten into it, and you've done maybe one or two little sessions like that, start asking them more questions, not necessarily about the game itself, but how you can sort of contribute back into the game. So you might turn around and say. Are there any good places where I can pick up the books and any di my own dice, so I'm not borrowing off of everybody else? Um, you know, yes, there's a lot of websites that you can Google, and there's a myriad of websites that will come up showing you where you can buy the books, where you can buy the dice, and any other um, sort of tokens or anything else that you'll need to play the game. However, they may turn around and say, "Yeah, there's a comic book store or a game store in town, and if you buy all three books." and you buy a, you, all your dice and you buy this that and the other they'll give you a discount so you know it might be good to do that um, once you have got your books and things like that and you've got your character sheet from that gaming session try and read up a little bit on the class that you're playing um, the race that you're playing and any of the skills and stuff that you have because that way when it comes to your turn you've got an idea of what your character can do and in that situation in the environment you've got a bit more of an idea so you're not having to stop you're not having to think too much um, although I would always recommend thinking about what you're going to say or do before you actually just barge in and do it unless that is your character um, because again it helps speed the game up it helps keep people keeping the immersion and it's just a little bit more interesting and you're then getting a bit of a background knowledge as well for yourself so you're not having to ask everybody else what your character can do, what they can't do, why they can do it, why they can't do it, so you've got the idea and the knowledge yourself, okay? And of course, have fun. It's a game, it's a social environment, it's a social sort of hobby, so go on and have fun. And it's as simple as that. So, that was quite a long one, because it has quite a lot of points to it. The other two, I promise, are not as long. Um, so, but the second way of getting into it, if don't know anybody who does that or you've got a couple of friends or family members who are all looking at starting at the same time what do you do well there's a number of ways but one of the good ways is picking up that one of the starter sets so this is the Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition starter set um, and this will give you all the basic information that you need to get into Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition 
from the word go all on your own okay so what do you get in this well in the box you actually get enough stuff to have a little sort of run of a campaign sort of thing and get your characters from level one to level five and it will tell you everything that you need to know within the box set itself so you get a starters rule set and it's a very basic rule set of the actual game itself so the information in here is really quite basic sort of stuff um, it's it's not too it's not there designed to there try and bog you down it's designed to give you the information that you need to run the game from the starter set and it actually has I don't know if I'll be able to see there you go it's actually got the contents and stuff on the front page on the front cover and that will just basically tell you it's basically a contents list really so it breaks it down into chapters so you can fl flick fairly quickly through to anything that you need to need to know while you're playing the game um, some of the stuff in there you won't necessarily need to look at too much um, but it is still there it's there in the book just to give you a basic idea of that um, the next book is this one now this book is the actual campaign itself so in this one this is the one that the dungeon master will have um, and essentially the dungeon master will be the only one to read this book <coughs> so it will break down everything and it tells you really basically to start off with how to be a dungeon master what is expected of you to be a dungeon master and it kind of gives you quite a lot of open ideas as well um, but being a dungeon master as well can be quite a bit of a nerve wracking thing the first time you do it however <coughs> in this book there are sections where it has um, sort of like coloured boxes and they're the parts that you read out to the players to give them an idea of where you are what the situation is where the setting is if there's people around what the people are like what they're doing and, and things like that <coughs> and then everything else in there is basically just to say right if the players decide they don't want to talk to this person they want to go down this path turn to this page and start reading from this section of this page and it will tell you to do that if they have I'm not going to try and go through too much of the book because if you are looking again in this I don't want it to be too much of a, a spoiler but you know for example <coughs> they haven't got the crown of infinite goblinness um, but they do have the sword of poking turn to this page because they can't do this event but they can do this event to trigger something else and and so it will break it down really quite nicely um, just because of that it's a good starting thing if you are getting involved in Dungeons and Dragons probably getting a star set if you are brand new just because of that book will be really helpful um, the the last thing well one of the last things is it actually gives you a number of these now these are pre-generated character sheets okay and it will give you all of the information that you need right off the bat okay now personally I recommend what you do is you photocopy these um, just because then you've got you can have a pen or a pencil and you can make notes on the photocopy and you can keep these for when you're playing again and it will give you all the information and it's basically the entire character at level one made for you and what's really good is that that's obviously the front on the back it actually gives you a lot more information so the so this class and race is actually a human fighter and it will actually give you some information so it tells you here about humans about fighting a bit about the background of the character and stuff like that and then on this side it's all about gaining level so it talks about experience points and then at level two three four and five what extra abilities that you'll get <coughs> and things like that so just on that one sheet that will give you enough information to run this human fighter from level one to level five obviously without fighting all the monsters and stuff um, but that will tell you all the information you need just on one one sheet 
And altogether there is one, two, three, four. So there's five different character sheets, I believe. Is it five? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, so there's five different character sheets. Um, so you have got sort of like fighters, you've got ranged, um, you've got magic users, and you've got a rogue in there as well. So it gives you sort of like the basic classes. Um, now, that being said, to play, if you wanted every sort of, um, all the classes and the character sheets and the role of the dungeon master to be filled, you would need six players. However, you don't need to have six players. Um, I would recommend having at least three, so one could be the dungeon master and at least two people could have characters. Um, you can do it if two of you. Um, if you do that, then I would recommend that the, the player has two characters because possibly two characters, or the dungeon master has a look through the um, the enemy list of the on the um, the characters, the enemy characters, sorry, and just tries to rein them in a little bit, so possibly reducing the number of enemies that they're fighting and things because at level one. If you're on your own, you can find yourself overwhelmed fairly quickly in this. So uh, it depends on how you want to do it. But I would look at if there's two of you, probably half in the number of mobs that you that you come up against, or having two characters, so one one sheet, uh, two sheets, sorry, for one player. But it depends on how many people that you get. Um, you also get a pack of the dice, so you do get enough dice to actually run the game. And you do get a D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, and a D20. So you do get six dice in this, and all of those will be required. And they will also give you um, the explanation of the dice and what you need to roll the dice for and things in the um, the two books. So again, it's a great thing to read through. So that's a starter set, <coughs> and if it's not Dungeons and Dragons you're looking at getting into, there may be other um, box sets for different game systems out there. It's whatever game system you're looking for, just have a check because they may have a game system, uh, a starter box for that game system. And the third way of getting into the bot into the, um, the hobby is quite an easy one log on to something like Facebook and search for role playing groups. It's as simple as that. There are a number of them out there. Um, I will drop a link to a couple of the ones that are linked on Facebook into the description down below. Um, quite a few of them you have to be um, accepted to join by the admin and that's just so it's not flooded and you know the gates are open it's so they can uh, keep an eye on the people that are coming in and things like that once you're in there you know introduce yourself you know just say who you are where you're from in the world um, what game systems that you're interested in um, you know that you might know already what ones that you might actually be looking at pl playing or trying and you know just keep active on the groups um, Obviously, once again, you know, be friendly. Um, you know, keep chatting on there and things like that. You will make friends, and you will get invited into games and things. Um, the only thing that you have to be aware of using the Facebook groups is quite a lot of them. You will need to prepare if you are going to play. Be prepared to be on camera. Quite a lot of the groups are played via systems such as um, Google Hangouts. They are. Um, played by Skype and things like that. Sometimes they'll be used um, systems such as TeamSpeak, so you just need a microphone, um, but quite a lot of them will be recorded and will go up onto people's YouTube channels and things like that, so just be aware of that. If you're not comfortable in doing that, you can say that you haven't got a webcam, but you're not comfortable in doing that, and sometimes games will come around where you're not being recorded or you're not going to be on camera and things like that so it does work out 
but like I say there will be some links in the description down below so the final thoughts of this video um, in any way that you get in whether it's one of the three ways that I've described or if it's another way that you've got into the hobby be friendly the idea is of this hobby is that it's social um, it's people communicating with each other your character could be an arsehole but if you're an arsehole as well you're not going to get many games played people aren't going to want to play you so be friendly be kind respectful and things like that you will make friends doing this um, and if you have any questions ask the questions because there will be somebody in again any of the ways that I've explained or another way if you get into a hobby in another way people will be able to answer your questions and if you don't know just have a look through the books okay and it's really as simple as that and last but not least stay open-minded rule sets like Dungeons and Dragons are they do have their sort of like medieval fantasy st sort of feel to them however quite a lot of the rule sets can be altered to adapt to a different sort of theme so you know you can use the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition rules and you can move it up to almost like a modern day or a futuristic sort of setting you can take it right the way back and do almost like prehistoric sort of settings or it's it's completely up to you but just keep an open mind and most of all is have fun so I'm going to wind this video down I have babbled on for a very long time um, gonna get this sorted um, if you are getting into the hobby post a comment down below how you get into the hobby um, do you know somebody have you got the starter set have you joined an online group if you're already an experienced player how did you get into the hobby what was your route into the hobby and again post it in the comments down below I'm going to sign off, so thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, and or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.